Дорогі глядачі, продовжуємо сьогоднішню передачу «Контакт» тут, із нашої мобільної студії у Вінніпегу, якраз під час проводу 27-го Конгресу українців Канади. Якраз маємо при собі міністра канадського парламенту International Development Ханджіт Саджіт, який щойно був головним доповідачем і доповідав всім делегатам про найновіші програми канадського уряду. So uh, welcome, welcome to our show. Thank you. Uh, we've we've uh, met you many times before, uh, <laughs> both at the festival and yeah. as as contact. And mm -hmm. everybody gave you a standing ovation mm -hmm. for 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 what you just said in mm -hmm. there. And we were here, so we didn't hear that okay. part. So if you wouldn't mind uh, connecting with us a bit, and I'm sure uh, your recent visit to mm -hmm. Ukraine had a lot to do with setting up your your visit uh, yeah. your visit with us here today. No, it's well, yeah, I mean, first of all, I, I mean, I was just wanting. Um, uh, um, our appreciation and wavering support uh, to the Ukrainian uh, community and to, and to Ukraine. I just had the, for me, I mean, yes, I visited uh, Ukraine most recently, um, and it was actually just the day before the uh, the missile attacks, and actually delayed our entry into the country. But I've been into the, into Ukraine many times, and when I was Minister of Defense, and very proud to have expanded the training mission, which was very effective, and we're seeing the result of the brave, the bravery of the Ukrainian soldiers and how they're fighting. And to just to, I can, you know, our, I know all our soldiers who have been part of the the training mission, and even now, are very proud to have been part of that. And so, and then. Um, and most recently, when you see the atrocities that are taking place throughout the country, now my responsibility um, uh, is, to, is to support the Ukrainian people. Before it was to support the military. So now I say now I'm supporting the people directly. So my visit, just like I used to do before, is because I visited, it gives you a much better understanding. And, and, and you went together with uh, oh, yes, Minister Yvonne Baker, Yvonne Baker, Yvonne Baker uh, from yeah. the Etobicoke Center. Yeah, so because we came right after the missile attacks and got to see that uh, Putin is targeting the power, structure, power stations and the water infrastructure structure so it changed my mindset on what type of support we needed to provide because I want to get at what's happening on the ground so we just announced 55 million dollars for winterization support which could mean everything from blankets to to tents to uh, uh, generators so basically whatever the actual needs are and this is for the general public for the public yeah the absolutely public. yeah so for the public the military gets different support through um, uh, through Minister uh, uh, Minister of Defense, Nunn, uh, yeah. uh, of Defense. But this is making sure that people have the support. And that is very important because the resilience that I've seen on the ground with their people, is it's, it's, it's heartwarming, right? Um, but they also need support. There's 17, over 17 million people need humanitarian support in the country. So we want to make sure that we provide uh, the appropriate support at the right time. Now, so uh, this, is all, this is all right now in the planning. Is there any correct timing of how, how when of this can be expected to arrive oh, and how it's being a very good question. So one thing, I'll explain this way. What, when it comes to Ukraine, um, because one, uh, I would say that we have a very good understanding of what the actual needs are right from the early days, right? So even before uh, Putin, I would say, uh, because he had already invaded the country before, when he, yes. um, uh, from last year when he increased the invasion, we already knew that something was going to happen. So we actually started stockpiling uh, resources in cities with, with, with the UN early. So for us, this is not what we're doing now. My goal is to anticipate what the actual needs are and then making sure that the resources are there at the right time. So we've already been doing a lot of different things. So this is just a continuation of what we have been providing. So the winterization had already, it's already started. Oh really, okay. But because, it's, because of the recent missile attacks, we, need to, we have put in more funding for the winterization so we can get, have greater flexibility. And now we're already looking at what the next steps would be um, in, in the springtime. So we're always trying to think three to four months ahead. Well, uh, we, we recently had an opportunity to uh, meet with the uh, former director uh, of uh, the mission that you started in Ukraine mm -hmm. as Minister of Defense, uh, Colonel, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spoke with her and we asked her, are you proud of, uh, proud of the mission? Mm -hmm. Are you proud of what the Ukrainian soldiers are doing mm -hmm. as a result of the studies? Mm -hmm. And uh, she said that, you know, I can, I can train at, uh, uh, technical stuff. I can show how this rifle works, or I can how that kind of a military strategy works. But I can't 
teach them courage. Mm -hmm. I can't teach them integrity, and mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to hear what you think mm -hmm. of, uh, of 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 uh, to what extent the, the planning and the training in in that center mm -hmm. uh, worked out for Canada. Well, first of all, she she has a lot to be proud of, right? She was part of uh, a team that did extraordinary extraordinary work, and. The, the Ukrainian tenacity is always was always there in the soldiers, the bravery. We knew that. We, we were providing we were providing uh, the way we do things and that and we learn from one, one another. That's what I was hearing from, 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 from the soldiers. But I would say some of the biggest things that we did was actually to to change their way of thinking from their old Russian training to how we fight. And the big ones were, for example, but we, because people talk about weapon systems. Weapon systems are important. But without the right training, you can't use a good weapon system wisely. And we're seeing the impact of that now. The other aspect was, you know how Russians have a very centralized command at the higher levels. We have a very decentralized command. We have senior NCOs, people that are empowered at the lowest levels to be able to take action. So that's what uh, our soldiers on the ground and the colonel you were talking about teach the folks. But let's not forget logistics. So all those things that people don't uh, think about what we do, we provided our, our system of how we do things that is so important. And then she's absolutely right that when it comes to the bravery, the tenacity, they already had that, right? So we provided the training, they took that, and, and that's what makes an effective force and the morale that they have. It's been absolutely amazing uh, to see the bravery, but at the same time, the, but we know how many uh, soldiers have sacrificed their life in the defense of their country, and I want to acknowledge that sacrifice um, and pay my respect and condolences to their families. Thank, thank you. And c coming back to international development, uh, the Prime Minister was here with mm. us uh, yesterday and made the announcement of, about the bonds, yes, the government yeah. bonds. Mm. So how, how do you think that will help or with, with your ministry, mm -hmm. uh, international development? How does that fall in with, under your purview? So what it does is how we have different departments, which it allows me to focus the money that we have into key areas of focus. I, then I stay focused on the people so the bigger reconstruction projects can be done in different ways. Um, through other entities, so it allows me to stay focused on, on, on other aspects uh, of the support. So we get to be able to share the various support. So Minister Nunn stays focused on the security forces, right? I stay focused on the people. The, uh, the, the, the money that we raise through the bonds can be used in many different ways for the reconstruction. So that's what we're trying to do is making sure that there's a much bigger aspect of things. And I just want to, one other key takeaway that I, I took away from that visit was the, the need for mental health support. Oh my God, okay. uh, and uh, we're hearing you, a lot about there's, that. You, obviously, there's a lot of trauma that uh, people are facing, and I know that the First Lady um, uh, for Ukraine is is uh, is championing this. So this is something that we are looking at right now, and how we can support this because uh, Ukraine will be victorious, and then the soldiers will have to come home. We know how traumatizing is when our soldiers came back from Afghanistan, the support that's needed. So we want to be able to provide the appropriate uh, mental health support, not just for them, but it's not, uh, but how do we help them create a system of mental health support, which we had to do ourselves. So this is another area that we're going to take a look at and be able to work with the uh, Ukrainian government on this. Okay, well, Mr. S uh, Minister Sajid, thank you very much. Okay, thanks, thank you. For, thanks for being with us here today. Uh, із головним доповідачем тут на 27-му трирічному конгресі українців uh, Канади тут uh, у Вінніпезі. Продовжуємо нашу програму від Ляста після тих реклам. Дякую. Слава Україні!